Welcome to A-Level Physics, looking at the deformation of solids. First, we will look at Hooke's Law. I also give an explanation of Hooke's Law in my video on Hooke's Law and Young's Modulus. So forces can cause objects to deform, i.e. change their shape. The way in which an object deforms depends on its dimensions, the material it is made of, the size of the force, and the direction of the force. If you measure how a spring stretches as you imply increasing force and plot extension E against force F, the graph will be a straight line. Note, because the force acting on the spring, or any object, causes stretching, it is sometimes called tension or tensile force. So the graph shows that force is proportional to extension. This is what is known as Hooke's law. It can be written as F equals Kx, where F is the tension acting on the spring, x is the extension, and k is the gradient of the graph. It is known as the spring's constant. The equation for Hooke's law can be rearranged as k equals fx. The spring constant is equal to the applied force, f, divided by the extension, x. The spring constant k is measured in newton meters to the minus 1, because it is the force per unit extension. The value of k does not change unless you change the shape of the spring, or the material that the spring is made of. A stiffer spring has a greater value for the spring constant. We can apply the concept of spring constant to any object obeying Hooke's law. Such an object is called elastic or linearly. An elastic object will return to its original form if the force acting on it is removed. Deformation in an elastic object increases linearly with the force. In fact, the vast majority of the materials obey Hooke's law, for at least a part of the range of their deformation behaviour, e.g. glass rods and metal wires. In the diagram, if you extend a spring beyond point P, where it stops obeying Hooke's law, and then unload it completely, it won't return to its original shape. It has been permanently deformed, we call this point the elastic limit, the limit of elastic behaviour. If a material returns to its original size and shape when you remove the forces stretching or deforming it, this is called reversible deformation. We say that the material is demonstrating plastic behaviour. If deformation remains, this is called irreversible deformation. After the forces are removed, then it is a sign of plastic behaviour. We are now going to finish off by looking at the energy in deformations. Whenever we apply force to an object, it will cause deformation. If the deformation cause caused is within the elastic limit, the work done in deforming the object is stored within it as potential energy. We call this strain energy. It can be released from the object by removing the applied force. The strain energy then performs work in undeforming the object and returns to its original state.